Good morning. <laughs> My name is Kendra Gerald. I'm 16 years old and I live in Roxbury. I'm a teen. <laughs> I'm a teen empowerment youth organizer, and I also work for the Boston NAACP. So that's my name and my job, but for too many people, I'm identified by my appearance. This isn't easy because I'm biracial. This shouldn't be a big deal, but for some reason, it is. From the time I was a child, I was asked many times whether I was Hispanic or Cape Verdean. I cannot describe the puzzlement on people's faces when I said my simple answer, I'm black. I was raised by my dad who is of Afro-Caribbean descent and my mother was a Caucasian woman who is part Native American. She was also a drug addict and an alcoholic. Because of this, my father has had full custody of me and my older sister since I was an infant. Many people are surprised that a black male in America could take on the responsibility to actually raise two children. <laughs> Growing up, many of my friends would tell me how surprised they were that my dad stuck around because theirs didn't. People's perceptions of us as black people are that we are expected to be gang involved, incarcerated, and or uneducated. Because of those perceptions that are ingrained in the history of our country, sometimes we as black people have the same perceptions of ourselves. It impacts who we think we can be and what we think we can achieve. So part of the challenge we face is to change those perceptions of ourselves and learn to take pride in who we are and where we come from. <laughs> On the other hand, when approaching white people with my biracial identity, their responses were rather surprising. I'm a sophomore at Boston Latin Academy, and during my almost four years at the school, I've encountered some challenging situations regarding race. When I was in the eighth grade, I became more open about the fact that I was biracial instead of letting others assume that I was Hispanic or Cape Verdean. These conversations revealed the racism and the prejudice that some white people have towards people of color. Some of my white peers started to tell me crazy things such as, my dad said black people aren't allowed over the house because they steal, or is that my parents would disown me if I ever dated a black guy. Being a teenager and hearing these things really start, started to make me think, is this what my white family said about my dad to my mother? In the end, excuse me, is this what the... <laughs> is this what the general white population thinks about me and other people of color? In the end, it all goes back to the question of identity and how since slavery, racism has impacted how people feel about themselves and about others. So what are we gonna do about these negative stereotypes that run through our society that are both hurtful and inaccurate? To begin with, days like today are very important. We need to have more opportunities to talk openly and honestly about race. When we do this, more people will have We'll, stop learn, we'll learn to stop making assumptions. Then we can begin to have honest conversations about people's cultures and learn that the negative assumptions that are made about others are not true. Breaking down these negative stereotypes are an important step. We need these conversations to take place in schools and within different communities and see that they engage people of all ages in the process. We need to find a way to have these conversations between people who live in the city and people who live in the suburbs, between rich and poor, and between young and old. We will never break down these stereotypes unless we bring people together so that they can get to know each other and appreciate the challenges that people of color face in this country. Breaking down stereotypes is just the first step. 
There also needs to be a commitment to root out the systematic racism that puts so many young people of color in jail and denies us the educational that denies us the educational and vocational opportunities that we deserve. The developing our relationships and understanding of each other will serve as a foundation to build a more just society where all of us are given an equal opportunity to have a decent life. So I ask all of us to take a step back and open our minds. We must understand that we come from different cultures, but we are one race. We are the human race. The sooner we understand that as a country, the better off we will be. We must understand our differences and we must respect them. That's the America I dream of. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Dante, and my Do I'm a Dorchester native. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. My name is Dante. I'm a Dorchester native. And I'm a teen empowerment youth, youth organizer. When you look at me, what do you see? If you categorize me as a young black male who is a troublesome child, then you're not alone. But honestly, to a certain extent, you're right. I used to be the guy who contributed to the destruction of our beautiful city because of my involvement in things from shootouts to selling drugs. I've done it all, and I've almost lost my life plenty of times. However, this is not where my story begins, nor where it ends. I know that I'm responsible for my actions, and I would suggest that while I know we're all responsible for our own actions, it's important to understand that racism affects me on the daily. Young men of color are confronted with the world that is telling us that we're not valued, that we're criminal by nature, and we're people to be feared. Because of this reality, I wake up in the morning, and I just don't know how my day is going to go. Since the day I was born, the color of my skin has affected how other people view me, and subsequently how I view myself. From an early age, I learned to be afraid to be black. My grandparents, who were born in South Carolina, told me stories about, the dark, stories about growing up in the Deep South. They lived in a time where it was a game to hate and harass black people. And it was like you got a trophy for just being an innocent black person. The rules, have, the rules of the game have changed, and they're different players, but the game remains the same. We cannot understand racism as it is today without looking at the evolution of racism throughout history. The horrific history of the enslavement, lynching, and murder of African Americans in America is a shameful part of our, of our past that has, a shameful part of our past that has never been held and hardly even recognized. In addition to my problems, I've obtained the problems of my grandparents and their, and their grandparents' problems, and I have to live them today. I live this life every day. I can't stop it. I have to go through it. The problem is generational, and the problem is racism. Racism is the fact there are people who have never met me, but have hatred, hatred toward me because of the color of my skin. It is the fact that as a young black male, I have to do everything 10 times better than my white counterparts, and I still get stopped by police. But, uh, I still get stopped by police, whether I'm wearing a hoodie 
or dressed up in a button down shirt and khakis for an interview. Today, too many people believe that as long as you try hard enough, everyone has equal opportunity. But this is not true, and this has never been true. From the murder of Emmett. From the murder of Emmett Till to the murder of Trayvon Martin, two boys who looked like me and did nothing wrong. American society has made it clear to me that racism isn't just a word. It is a reality that the color of my skin limits my opportunities, my health, my safety, and my rights to express myself. It limits my rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness that is supposed to be guaranteed to all of us by the Constitution. As a youth organizer at Team Empowerment, working to change the deeply rooted impact of racism, I've been motivated to look deeper into the issues that, that my community face, including policing, education, violence, joblessness, housing, and more. I stand before you, a 20-year-old black male in Boston with the experience, knowledge, and understanding of why and how racism affects me and my community on a daily basis. This awareness has helped me to learn to love the skin on men, even though others do not. <laughs> Needless to say, this awareness has also made things a bit hectic for me. I've been part of the system for years, and it's unfair, and it's unjust. I've been judged as a school dropout, a problem, and I've been told that it's my fault that I do not have a, li a stable living situation. In reality, I was pushed out of school with no academic support on top of not having a place to sleep. This is not just my experience. Zero tolerance policies, test-based curriculum, segregated schools, no arts education, and a police presence that can create a hostile learning environment, to name a few. have led to more than 50% dropout rate of black and brown male students in urban schools. Students who drop out are at an increased risk of being unemployed, live in poverty, and, and be in prison. Unfortunately, public conversation displaces blame on students and families and, and ignores the policies and practices that continue to oppress young people like me. Imagine how it feels to constantly try to do something right, but get knocked back down. That feeling pushes people in negativity and makes them angry and want to fight back because they just can't take it anymore. Some people try to fight back, but they don't know how. And they get locked up, and a cycle is created. People are not born racist. They're taught it. Our job is to create awareness that it is real, that it exists, and that is my and my brother and sister's lived experience. For real change to happen, we need a recognition that racism exists and a commitment to changing the system that supports its continuation in our lives. Listen to youth of color is a great start. Thank you for giving me this opportunity today. I'm not done. <laughs> I'm not done. <laughs> Thank you for giving me this opportunity today. But we need so much more. We need young people of color to have opportunity to be leaders, to be heard, and to have access to youth leadership jobs. We also need to greatly increase efforts to improve relationships between youth and police. The work that Team Empowerment and others are doing to improve police and youth relationships is a great start, but it's just a start. Every police officer in Boston, regardless of their department, should be required 
to get to know young people of color in the community they are serving so that they <laughs> so they, they can appreciate that we are required to get to know young people of color in the community they are serving so that they, so that they can appreciate that we are so much more than the stereotypes that society has of us. Eliminating racism from our society is a big job that probably won't get accomplished in our lifetime. But we can make progress and we must make progress. So thank you for having this important meeting today. I hope it can be an important step that, I hope it can be an important step and that together we can make positive action to move towards a society that values all of us and looks beyond what you think you see and know, inclu including people that look like me. Thank you. Everyone feel that?